the first page is one big question. So here's what my graph looks like. Uh, I will point out, you've got your hyperbola there, which I think most people are pretty good at drawing it, but x squared equals 8y, that's y equals x squared on 8, which is very shallow. So if you drew like a normal parabola, it would have been, well, it just would have looked very different and your scale would have been off. Same basic shape though, okay? So that's what your graph should look like. Um, if I were marking this, so you got two marks there, yeah? Where do you think you'd put the two marks? Two marks. Just keep in mind what part one is and all it asks you to do. I expect there's one mark for the hyperbola and one mark for the parabola, right? We will get to a point of intersection in a minute, but that has nothing to do with part one and its marks. Does that make sense? So if you're marking your friends, um, you want to make sure you've got... Um, I mean, I've been a little bit naughty and I haven't put a point for scale there. So let's put something like this. And where's another one I could put? Well, if that's that, then what does that point have to be? It's an eighth, right? Uh, sorry, that's one and an eighth. Okay, so there you go. We're looking mainly for curvature. Let's have a look at part two. Show the coordinates of the point of intersection of the two graphs. Ah, uh, we've, I've talked endlessly about the value of saying what you're doing right so if what you're looking at right now in front of you is just a bunch of equations then obviously if it's all correct if all the equations are correct you're not going to surrender any marks but i would contend that you surrendered the clarity of your proof it is a proof isn't it like you've got a given result you've got to get there yeah you didn't have to redraw a diagram for this but I think you were kind of kidding yourself if you at least didn't go back to your original diagram and have a see at what you could do with the area of the region bounded by, here we go, number one, x-axis, number two, the curves, plural, and number three, boundaries, okay? So here's my picture over here, right? You can see I've got the x-axis there on the bottom, and then I've got the curves, plural, as well as my, my zero boundary and my two E boundary. So you see what I've done there, okay? Now, having drawn it like this, it becomes abundantly clear that you've got two integrals here, right? Like you should form one and you should form the other. This is not the difference between two. This is an integral over here. The black line at the moment up here is irrelevant, right? To forming that. And then over here, the blue line is irrelevant. It's not gonna come in, okay? So once you've drawn this diagram, it becomes very easy to form the correct integrals. That's what it should look like. So you've got 0 to 2 to do the parabola, 2 to 2e two e to do the hyperbola, and you can see the way my numbers pan out. A little bit of work with your log laws and a careful evaluation of all your boundaries, and I think you should have gotten 4 thirds or 1 and a third <coughs> units square. Happy? You mean they've left it like, what have they left it as? That's a bit sad. <laughs> That's a bit sad. Okay, let's have a look at this. Well, okay, all right, you guys can help me out. There are three marks. You're the marker. Where do you think the three marks should go? Okay, so the formation of the integrals. I think that's a really, really good line. Let's put one there. Okay, now I'm going to pause you there. Um, as, a, as a marker, right, I want to make things as easy, okay, my, for myself. I see this is three marks, and I see it's not a given result. It's not a given result. So that means the result you end up with will be one of the marks, yeah? Does that make sense? So now what's left for me is, well, I've got one last mark to place. Where do you think would be an appropriate spot? Do, do you think the second line? Let, let's think about this. Let's think about this because you've noticed there are three marks, but there are more than three things. So we have to make a decision. What do you reckon, Eddie? Okay, so let's actually, I'm not going to put a mark on yet, but let's actually dissect what are the skills that have been demonstrated, okay? Um, in the first place, and this is a really, really big thing, right? You're forming integrals on the basis of the area, right? And that's really hard. Students will often mark that up. Okay, so cool. I think that definitely guarantees a mark. Then when we go forward, you've got integration here. What happens in the next line? Evaluation. This is the evaluation of the boundaries, right? What follows after that, I think most of us agree, like this stuff in here, 
is simplification which is important but is not the main emphasis of the question okay so i think you know what whatever happens down here i'm going to sort of let that go which to answer the original question right 32 on 24 i think you scrape through and you you're going to get that mark okay because because what is this question about it's not about fractions it's not really even about um the log laws that you end up needing down here i probably would have won an extra mark on that Clearly the more important part, and it's really just an argument, um, sorry, I should rub this off too, is either going to be this or this. Now, when I look at this question uh, and where it fits in the context of the rest of the paper, I think if this was actually an exam, right? I think I'd lean towards the evaluation of the boundaries. Now this is a genuine 50-50. The reason why is because that first part, the integration, right? I'm assessing differentiation elsewhere in this paper. In fact, I'm assessing this exact result, right? So if I've assessed that, I'm not gonna pay someone two marks for demonstrating the same skill twice. I know it's in reverse, but it's pretty close. Whereas there's nothing else like the, de the evaluation of boundaries anywhere else in my paper or anywhere else in this question, etc. okay? But on another day, it, I might have gone the other way. Do you see how? It's like, oh, look, there are four things here. And I'm going to pick three of them, and it'll be this or that. Does it make sense? Okay, so there's my area. Oh, by the way, uh, it is an area. Um, if you didn't have units on there, <coughs> I'd be very tempted to lop off that whole mark. Okay, again, because there's nowhere else in this paper that units have been assessed, and it quite clearly states you're finding an area, not evaluating integral. The integral is how you get the area. Okay, a few derivatives, what do you think? Yay. Agree? So let's just quickly start to march through. You've got a standard product rule. Hey, miss. You've got a standard chain rule here, and then you've got a standard quotient rule. Right, so there's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, you'll also notice I've twice, I've said, look, you've got um, these two ways of doing it and you've got these two ways of doing it. Because the question simply states, differentiate, right? Um, either of those forms is fine. Um, which form would be simplest? It kind of depends on where the question is going. You can see why I've done this, right? Like, why would I do that? Where, where might this question be going? Come on, why do you differentiate? You're either, you're either graphing or more commonly you're finding a stationary point, in which case having this factorized makes it clearer, oh, there are th three stationary points. You see that? Okay, so we can move on from there. Right, now we're looking at some more recent content. So you actually may well have done this question. This question was part of... Yeah, this is the first one. So, so really... I was checking to see, were you able to um, recognize the form? Now, as I've showed before, I think in some way, it is enormously helpful if you highlight. I'm doing step one, I'm doing step two, I'm doing step three. Whether you put numbers, labels, underline, I kind of view this as equivalent to in an English essay, when you underline the name of the text that you're dealing with, right? Does that get you any marks? No, what's it doing? It's communicating to the marker, hey, here are some things that you should look for. See, I'm looking at Chaucer. I'm looking at the Tempest, whatever it is, okay? So there's my base case, n equals 1. There's my assumption, n equals k. And then you put your skates on and you do the real work, okay? So here's my proof. You can see the way that because this is just a regular old series, even if it's not an AP or a GP, you write out your required to prove step, this one in here. You write it out with the second last term in there because that's what we're going to get out of the inductive hypothesis, okay? Uh, if you forget to write it, that's okay. You can sort of bring it into here because it's still part of that series, right? K squared is still in there. Once you notice, okay, right there, there's the left-hand side of my inductive hypothesis. So then I make my substitution, and it is critically, critically important, please note on whoever's paper you're marking, that there is a reason stated for why the substitution is made, okay? Uh, I think by assumption is just the quickest way, you can say, um, by the inductive hypothesis, but this, this works fine, okay? Uh, and then from there, it's just some algebra, yeah? Um, please note, 
I think you'd be hard pressed to put any fewer lines than this. Remember, it's a proof. It's a proof, okay? Even this, under normal circumstances, is a bit of a, huh, yeah, but I told you it was 2K plus 3K plus 2, right? But I think it's fair at this point, you're extension one students, we expect you to be able to factorize a non monic quadratic, so I think you can do that, provided you've um, not been, you know, clumsy here and tried to skip over stuff. Uh, don't, don't do that, okay? Question. Where would you put the marks? Sure, okay, this is worth, uh, oh, it's worth mystery marks. Okay, uh, well, let's walk through. Let's walk through. I would estimate this question would be worth three. I'd, I'd probably put it at three. Um, it's not for each part, because as you know, the parts are not weighted evenly, are they? Right? They're not weighted evenly at all. So I would probably put um, test and assume that whole thing, that's one mark. Right? Which means if, for instance, you do one of them but not the other, you just surrender that mark. It's gone, right? It's like uh, you've, got to, you've got to get above the barrier to get anything at all there, right? And to be fair, the test and the assumption are kind of trivial, right? So that, that should be an easy mark, really. That means that there are two marks somewhere nestled into here. Where do you think they should go? Okay, so you might, it, it seems a bit strict, but really, you remember how I said, yeah, you've got to have. Um, that phrase by assumption in there, right? What that really is part of is the actual use of the assumption, right? So this whole line, including the fact that you set a reason for it, that's one mark right there, okay? Um, using the assumption, bringing it in, and then in here, they're going to pick some point uh, where they feel like, oh, okay, I think if they've gotten to this point, the rest of it is, is very simple. You might say, I'd be tempted to get to here. I'd, I'd probably say there, right? If you if you showed me this, that line there, the um, the expansion, and you hadn't collected like terms, two k squared plus k plus six k plus six, I, I that doesn't look like k plus two times two k plus three to me at all. Like that doesn't look obvious. There's no quick way to factorize that. Whereas from here to here, it's kind of an irreducible step. I mean, I know you can separate out and you can do pairs, but that's like a two unit skill, in fact, that's a stage five skill, okay? So I think we sort of let that one go. Um, so long as you can get to that quadratic, you're home, okay?